with that you know so the 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 small introduction you know so the, let me take up the first keynote address by professor anand pupala uh, <clears throat> and uh, i have the the great pleasure in introducing him uh, he is such a uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, the accomplished person, uh, but uh, uh, just you knows the for the for the uh, for, for, for the uh, for the good of the viewers. You knows the I just wanted to give you knows the brief about his uh, achievements. So from Sir Anand Popula currently serves as A.P. Wiley and Florence uh, Chair of uh, <coughs> Jackery Civil and Environmental Engineering at uh, Texas A&M. university and also an associate director of uh, uh, center for infrastructure renewal so the known as you know the car so since september 2019 he served as associate dean research in college of engineering and was a distinguished scholar professor in the department of civil university of texas at uh, arlington texas uh, <coughs> since 1996 na 96 the main areas of his research are stabilization of expansive soils uh, uavs for uh, structural monitoring studies and asset uh, management studies the dam safety and embankment slope studies in situ intrusive methods for char- site characterization infrastructure relations and material characterization studies so dr pupula is the current chair of soil mechanics uh, uh, section of the transportation research board and is a member of the design and construction group of trb previously he also chaired the engineering geology and site characterization committee of uh, aac and uh, soil and rock instrumentation committee of trb he served as president of united states universities council on geotechnical education and research from 2007 2009 Dr Pupla has received several major research grants from federal state and local government agencies uh, in fact you know say the funding is running into uh, <clears throat> millions of dollars Dr Pupla's research scholarly recorded re- record included 470 plus publications including 200 plus journals and journal papers and he has also edited seven special publications He has supervised 35 doctoral and 52 master's theses, and is currently advising 11 doctoral st- students and three postdoctoral fellows. Dr. Pupla is an editorial member of uh, several major journals, including AAC and ASTM. He has given a several keynote and invited talks all over the world, and today he is going to deliver his talk on a roadmap of. for geotechnical monitoring of transportation infrastructure assets using three dimensional models developed from unmanned aerial data so over to you <coughs> professor pupala thank you professor rao can you all uh, see the screen you all see the yeah we are seeing Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. Really appreciate that, Professor Rao. And again, uh, this topic is uh, something in the last uh, five years, we've been working a lot. There's a lot of research going in this particular topic. So I'm going to give you uh, an overview. Uh, Professor Babu knows about it because I think, you know, last more than a year back, I uh, gave a talk at the Trivandrum. And then right after that, we went to Bangalore on Sunday. and we gave a talk to the uh, bangalore city authorities on how to use drones for uh, main asset management so and i think you know this particular topic is a little bit of extension of that topic uh again the title is a road map for geotech monitoring of transportation infrastructure assets using 3d models developed from u unmanned aerial data using really the you see the uh, picture in the back uh, this is the uh, one of the uavs what uh, you will see later on Uh, and again i just want to acknowledge uh, the really the person who did the work is dr congress surya congress is my postdoc is associate research scientist in the department and again i i just want to say that um it's a we just a moved there a year back it's a so far move is very good i'm setting up my labs this is my second year 
COVID delayed a little bit. I think, you know, if things are all good in May, there was a conference in Dallas. I was hoping to host many of you coming to U.S. and giving a talk there. But I'm not sure how it's going to be. It's going to be a virtual conference most likely. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, they haven't made the decision yet. But, you know, if you do come to Dallas uh, in May for the conference at ASCGI, let, let me know. Okay. That let me go to the presentation outline. These are different topics I'll be covering. Introduction. And then also going to talk about infrastructure monitoring, how we are using. And then I'll give you a little bit of information on the UAV, you know, flight planning rules. And, you know, there are two major projects started in State Highway Agency in the Texas. And uh, we were the uh, principals on that. We actually re received the funding. So as a part of the project, we were able to uh, help with a lot of things, including uh, working with the Texas Highway Agency, known as Texas DOT, and worked on the flight planning. And then during the research, we were doing a lot of checks because if I knew you use an uh, unmanned aerial platform, you're obviously going to have to check and see the uh, system error analysis or any systemic errors, all those things. So that's the first part of it before we used these uh, UAVs. We call them also drones. So basically, we are using them in the field monitoring different topics. So I will briefly touch these three topics, pavement, bridge, and rail corridor. In all these uh, topics, we have underlying, uh, you know, causes uh, like, you know, distress, as we call, are contributed mostly by the soil. So remember that geotech is a big part of the infrastructure uh, performance. So I think, you know, by monitoring these infrastructure assets, we should be able to tell what the soils are doing. So that is the, uh, you know, underlying part of it. I will have some concluding remarks. So the infrastructure, I mean, this is the ASC report card is, you know, basically we have a very, uh, you know, infrastructure ratings are between C and D. So we have a bad uh, infrastructure, which is in a way good thing because it's uh, some of the infrastructure is pretty old. So one way do, to do this report card is it will tell the government agencies that they need to reinvest in the infrastructure. And hopefully, we, know, uh, we are trying to get more infrastructure dollars, research dollars also will come out of this. So one thing you can see there, one out of every five miles of highway is in poor condition. That means they require a lot of repairs. And a lot of times we can do different way investigations, including visual surveys and some kind of, you know, uh, our profilers or laser based surveys. They're all good to know whether the road needs to be repaired right away. So there, these are mostly inspection tools. But we also hope we can come up with a tool that can give us proactive way of monitoring, which is which could be a safe way and also quick and cost effective. I mean, traditional monitoring sometimes can be expensive. So we are looking for a tool that could be something that you could use it, you know, and get your data what you're looking for, understanding the condition of your infrastructure asset. So this is where I think, you know, the unmanned aerial vehicle systems became very popular. And in fact, it is considered the most disruptive technology in human history. You know, I mean, I, I, it's a it's a very fast growing industry. You know, it's like started with, uh, uh, I would say, like five, six, four or five years back, around 100 plus companies. Now you have thousands of companies working on different topics related to UAVs. And majority of the focus is on infrastructure side, which is very interesting. So you look at the one thing is by 2030, there are billions of drones that still tells you that there are some other things that we have challenges with use of UAVs. You have to make sure that it doesn't disrupt commercial tra you know, air traffic. So there are challenges for the, uh, from the aero side, but you know, uh, we are looking at more on application side, how we use drones to, use the, to, to help uh, civil infrastructure folks in understanding them. So one thing I want to mention in this slide is the photogrammetry. And photogrammetry is a really an art and science. You can take pictures in a, in a different direction. And then once you have the pictures, you can develop a, a, a you can stitch them and develop them something like a three-dimensional point, point clouds, which is many of you probably heard about this uh, 3D point clouds. So basically you will see some of them in my presentation. Uh, again, you can do this thing not just by drones. You can do this by even your simple handheld phone. You can take every picture you take. You have a lateral uh, system, I mean, coordinate systems. You can use the pictures and then stitch them, and then you can really develop a, a 3D type of mapping. And that is what we are looking at. It. If you can develop a quality uh, uh, photogrammetry map, 
you can use that to study a lot of things. You know, what is there? Is there any cracking? Are there any rutting? Are there any uh, heaving, soil heaving? All those things can be explained. So one thing we are using here is, you know, uh, aerial platforms. So we are looking at unmanned aerial vehicles. There are two types. One is rotary wing, which has a rotary system that will create your lift. You know, the lift is from continuous rotation. The other one is fixed wing, where a rigid wing, you know, across its body is helping with the with the movement of them. So you can have rotary wing, fixed wing. Uh, how you choose is basically it all depends on how, what is the t flight uh, time duration, all those things. So basically here, what I'm looking at is using you unmanned systems and then taking the imagery and then using that imagery to build a 3D visualization data that I can use it to assess the quality of my infrastructure. So everything falls under close range photogrammetry. This is less than 1,000 feet radius. And some of you probably working in satellite-based data, that's again, much more larger distance, you know, but that's also very powerful too. So remember that. So close range photogrammetry using UAV platform. So a lot of times you'll see in the presentation, UAV-CRP, so that means unmanned aerial vehicle based uh, close range photogrammetry. That is what this uh, particular presentation is about. So these are some of the drones, you know, you see on the left side, uh, that is your sense fly, you know, uh, this is a type of fixed wing type of UAV system. The one on the right side, we just uh, recently got this one. This is a DJI mattress, RTK, quadcopter. You can see the four uh, propellers on the top, you know, that's what creates it. And you see there are a lot of sensors. You can put a lot of uh, cameras, thermal cameras, you know, we can do a lot of other things related to vegetation index. We can do even mineralogies we can do. You know, these are the things which are actually why I want to present this information. So some of you are, you know, maybe go after some writing proposals in these areas will help you in doing research in this cutting edge area. And it requires not just a geotech, it requires outside geotech. So you may need to uh, team up with, uh, you know, uh, maybe aerospace industry or uh, aerospace engineering person and then together use some technologies like, you know, electrical engineering or computer science, some various uh, folks you can work together. So that is what my hope you will do it. This is another one is a VTOL, it's a vertical, like, you know, like a vertical it can lift and also land. This is also another popular tool that is coming. So all these are your, your tools where you can use your, your imagery sensors or different types of sensors. You use them to collect your data. You know? So this is uh, something you know, we are looking. We don't have this one, but hopefully we'll get one of these days. So as I mentioned here, my platform is unmanned aerial vehicles or aerial systems, UAV, UAS or drones. Then I use the photogrammetry using my cameras on the drones. And I can say there are two places you can place cameras. One you can place on the bottom side of your drone, which is most of the times you can do. The other one you can do on the top. So if you have, if you have what we call gimbals, where you can attach your, your sensor, you can collect the data all around your drone. That is very powerful data that you're collecting so much data. If you like, you know, fly for like 10 to 15 minutes, you have a huge amount of data. And then you process the data, you can get a lot of information related to your infrastructure. So here, what I'm mentioning is proactive monitoring. A lot of times, by the time we, we, are, we know there's a problem, it's too late. You have to go back and completely dismantle and repair it, you know? And this is something, I mean, you can do a little bit of a renovation at that time, but it's very late sometimes. For particularly high waste, you can do, if there's a problem starting, a crack starting because of your expensive soil, if you cut it down early, you can actually maintain that road for a longer period, or you can have it in service for a longer period. But if you do wait too long, the cracks become too wide, and then it's too late. So we are looking at proactive way. That is something is very important. So this will actually help with the preventive maintenance, and this is something is, is going to be helpful. So one thing I want to mention on our information is two types of monitoring data. We can do qualitative-wise, which will be helpful in QA, QC applications, quality assurance and quality construction. You'll see some of our drone data on the geosynthetic geocell sections. We can use that to understand some issues with the construction. We can also do quantitative. This is where I am very interested in, come up with some parameters that we can you know, get out of it. And then that's what we are looking at it. So some product that comes out of this analysis are 3D mapping products, dense point clouds. You know, this is where you put the whole data. And then you process them. You can get the different things like DEM, digital elevation model, which gives you all the elevation changes. 
and then ortho mosaics, which is your you know the the dimensions, the features of the dimensions from prototype to your model type. So all these products are very useful in your analysis. Let me give you some flight rules. This is very important. So there are four rules. So these are important because when you can't just fly and everything that can create an accident, you know. So you have to be you have to establish some safety rules. So for some of these rules were established by Texas DOT, and we all vetted them in our real uh, field applications. So one of the rule is increase flight crew safety by locating operations away from the roadway. So you are, if you are looking at the roadway for, from using your drones or railways, do, do it away from them. Don't stay near there. That's important. And if you have a speed, high speed limits, like in some cases, 40 meters per hour, your aircraft should cross at an altitude of 50 feet, you know, flare on 15 meters. So that's where you're above ground level you want to fly. Because the closer to the surface, obviously, you don't want to hit, uh, hit by a truck uh, or a bus. So you want to make sure that you get your uh, meaningful data. The closer you get, the higher accuracy. But at the same time, you have to make sure that you give enough clearance. Then rule three is takeoff and landings. You know, if you have a divided highway in the middle, then you always want to do, you know, outside the, this highway. Don't do in the middle because that's a, a potential area where you can have a problem. So this is prohibited here. You cannot do takeoff and landing in the middle of two highways going two different directions. You have to go outside on both sides. So and then aircraft will not operate within six feet of any object. You know, any fixed object, you should not uh, do it very close to that. The other three things... You know, when working uh, along a, a right of way of a road, that means near, where the road, you know, has a certain right of way, okay, the aircraft is prohibited from entering into adjacent railroad, okay, right of way without the approval of US coordinator. You can't just uh, fly wherever you want to go. You can only fly sometimes along the uh, railroad or, uh, you know, uh, the structure. Uh, rule six is no aircraft will operate under the deck of an overpass bridge. So if you are doing for a bridge investigation, you can't just uh, uh, go and, you know, you cannot operate it under the deck of an overpass without traffic on lower roadway, without an approved traffic plan. You really have to stop the traffic. You can't just fly, yeah, on a, you know, if you have an underpass and then you have a bridge and you can't just fly because you have a, a drone and you can go, you cannot just go because of the, you're interrupting the traffic and can create an accident. Okay, the aircraft will not operate directly above roadway when vehicles are present. This is the most important rule. So if you have a live traffic going, you can't fly over them. You can only fly along the uh, roadway. So you can, if you want to get the data on the you know things, you can go along it, but don't cross the roadway. You know, in a live traffic, that is the most important one. So there are other things, you know, if you have a big truck with a lot of wind, obviously a drone will blow blown away. So you need to be careful. There is some safe distance. Here is, it says 20 feet minimum, you know, for below you know, 40 miles per hour speed, you, you have to be within 10 feet. And you can see the, the minimum crossing is given as around 50 feet above ground level. Also, you, you have to make sure that you put some enough information up front. This is very important because an accident is a liability is an important issue so you have to make sure that you 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 know tell the uh, drivers or the you know the uh, the people who are driving there that there is a drone activity is going on because a lot of times people like to see these things so that create an accident environment so you have to put some signs this is a sign we created for our research study so we were able to use it so the next thing is okay it's, everything is nice we have drone and we have all these things which is really interesting but can we just rely on this data? So the first thing, you know, uh, Surya Congress did for his PhD work is did this total calibration and system analysis. And this is very important because when you take the image, if the image is distorted, which could be because when you fly, you don't have a good control, you have a, a, a erroneous uh, in, in interpretation. So we checked all these things. What you see there, checkerboard, you know, after different sizes and also Siemens star. These are some things we did it in, both in indoor and outdoor. We actually used our uh, basketball stadium in our uh, university. We closed it for our study. So first we flew inside this big, nice uh, basketball arena and we flew all, and then we kind of checked everything. That's in, in, inside with the ambient conditions. So then we did outside, you know, we went to the real field with the real wind and real temperature. We did the same study outside. So this particular paper is an engineering geologist published uh, three years back. So it, it tells you, you know, how the images and if there's an issue, if there is a, also how good a resolution you're getting on the image analysis. The other things we did is temperature. Sometimes 
if you are at a high temperature, like, you know, uh, particularly in Texas in summers, we hit like at 38 to 40 and the temperatures can affect our lenses. So your image will be distorted. So we checked with this, uh, you know, uh, infrared thermometer, check the temperatures on the drone and also on the lens and see if that is causing any distortion in our focal length and causing any image errors. Because all these things are important because you are relying on your images to do the photogrammetry analysis and then using them for your understanding of all the factors like you know what, what is causing soil heaving, all those things. So if you don't have a good quality of your data, it's a, it's a waste. So this is the first important step and this is a unique feature of our research. You know, this is one reason actually we were funded because we included a comprehensive analysis. So how, how does the whole thing work? So this is the most important thing. You see the person there, he's setting up some ground control points with well-established uh, uh, coordinate system. This is important because when you collect the data, you have to check and see if the data is you know, properly calibrated. The second important thing is that the flight plan. So in this case, this is the you know parking lot and roads. We want to study this area. So we had to create a, a, a nice flight plan of how the drone is gonna fly. So all these points will tell you the direction and then you see everything when we did it, we tried to have an overlap so we can collect the images from left side, right side, front side. So that is helpful for us to build a very nice photogrammetry. And then you, with, with that type of uh, uh, flight path, you have a wonderful overlap, which is very important. And then drones fly using GPS and we also have drones that fly on GNSS. These are different systems. And GPS uses uh, six satellite, GNSS uses much more depending on the things, this is important. So when you create a plot, this whole thing flies based on this uh, you know, flight path, and then it uses all this satellite coordinate system to fly. At every point you take uh, ground, you take the photos, like what you see is the photo, photos of that one. And you see some places you have GCP. Those are ground control points. So you have to mix those ground control points because when we analyze it, we will check and see how closely are we getting the ground control points. That is, you know, if you do not do that, it's very difficult to do it. So here is like the drone is like a, it's a, a video that's showing as it flies. It, every time it goes, it takes pictures and then it finishes and then it takes second round. You can see it going backwards again this way. So it has some overlap of the pictures. So this is what, like you know, uh, this uh, this particular drone. This is our you know hexacopter. It flies and then it actually takes pictures, and this is the information of what how we had to do it. Again, with a new system, the every almost every few months you have some advances in the drone technology. So it's a lot of the new ones uh, work with GNSS, and that is much more powerful because with some of these GPS-based technologies, sometimes if you are flying under the bridge you may not get a good information. Let's say you're interested in scour, you know, and uh, you want to look at the pier, you know, in a, in a river stream. So if you want to fly underneath it, you may lose this uh, GPS uh, coordinate under the bridge, then you may, you know, you may have an accident. You may, like, I've seen people losing the drones in the, in the river, you know. So this is something you have to do all these checks before you go to uh, use this uh, expensive drone in the field. So you have to be careful with all these things. So what you see here is that particular same parking lot area. So all these things, what you see is all the photographs taken. Everything is like stacked there. It's a photograph of different numbers. Each photograph is like taken from the drone has some information is there. So now we have all the images. We can download the images from my drone and you can go to your computers. You have a software for analysis, for photogrammetry analysis. Now you can start analyzing them by stitching the data. And this is the part typically takes uh, hours, you know, and this is something I can show you. Now I'm gonna think, let me show you here. I'm gonna show you some bridge data. So what you see here is a bridge, of course, like this, it doesn't have a scour, but we are looking for rusting, some kind of issues. So this is in Houston, you know, one of the highway bridges. So now we, when we analyze it, you can see the same thing. It's converted into an image with the 3D photogrammetry analysis. So, and then, it does what you see is like, you know, each of these things will convert into a lot of pixels. So this is what is a dense point cloud. So once you have this dense point cloud, you have huge amount of information. I know the video probably a little bit shaky uh, because of the, you know, high bandwidth, but nevertheless, it will give you an idea. So everything you have, the imagery converted into point cloud, then you can extract whichever area you want. You can get more out of it. You can look at the corrosion, you can look at any scour, and you, you can see some cracking on the infrastructure. So all these underlying factors is something we can do. 
So right now for bridges, we are doing some big investigation. So every two years, you have every bridge has to be ratified. Okay, in every state, highway agency has to ratify their bridges to see whether they are they need for a repair money and all those things. They, you need to have this annual survey. So geotech is a big part of it because geotechnical features of a bridge. I can tell you when the bridge approach slab, if the approach slab is settling, there's an issue. And then also I mentioned about the foundations, mostly in this case, piers or drill shafts. You have to see if there's any cover, all those things. And then walls, wing walls, you know, if the walls are moving because of backfill is pushing it, you have to check and see if there's anything. So we are using these drones right now to look at the bridge monitoring and we actually just, we're starting a big project starting in two months in a, in a, I mean Alaska highways. We are looking at some wonderful bridges. Hopefully in, down the line, I will show you some of this data. It's a beautiful data. And then you have to look at, once you collect the data, you can sit in your computer. You can do all the analysis of structural assessments, substructural assessment, geotechnical assessment. So there are a lot of what you call is like a uh, kind of a sheet where that you, every element you have to see what is the state of it and then when you fill up the form in a computer database it will tell you whether the bridge needs a lot of rehabilitation our bridge is working okay our bridge needs to be the rating load rating should be reduced if you have a bad foundation you need to reduce it so this is a one of the bridge monitoring part which we are looking at it so the next thing i'm going to show you is the pavement monitoring and this pavement monitoring is again this is one of the expansive soil area one thing is I think my students are both uh, Nippo and uh, Ashraf are in the audience. So this is their PhD work. One of them is working on a geocell sections. You will see this is the installation. During installation, we are able to do, you can see the drone is outside the roads. It's not on the top of the road. So from an angle, we are collecting the data. Okay. So you see it now. Oops, sorry, it goes so fast. <laughs> you see, you see that the geocell. All these things, what you see there is like, you know, if I can stop somewhere, maybe I can. So you here is a geocell is placed here. If you see quickly, the geocell spread and then you put a wrap material. I think Suresh knows this work. So we put everything and then we finished our base layer and then we put a you know, pavement on top. We're monitoring this pavement section. Basically, we are looking at it is whether geocell reinforced with the uh, geocell system with the with the, with the app material, which is an old reclaimed asphalt, which is not a high quality aggregate, can we use with a, with a, with a more re, robust GSL, can we use that in a system, you know, and uh, see if we can provide a very good resistance. You know, Professor Raj Gopal is well known in this area also. So basically this is our test, real test sections and real pavement. So we are monitoring, we did this in the lab first, but now we did in the field. So the drones here is used for quality control to see if the if the work is done properly, if the material is properly placed. So this information, when we sat down, it was very useful. I just showed four or five clips, but it is what we call quality control, quality assessment during construction. And a lot of uh, big companies, mega construction companies, they use drones now every day to collect the data, data all over the world. I'm pretty sure they're doing in uh, many parts in India also. So we have a lot of good information coming, but how do we process it? What can we get out of it? Unfortunately, majority of the data is not very well used because of the, you know, you're still developing tools and analysis. But again, this is a very important uh, process, you know, a bird's eye view of everything what is taking place. So this is another interesting project on, on a highway. This is in a, a city near Houston. So you probably heard about it. It's one of the worst Harvey hurricane. When this hurricane hit, this whole area got flooded and a lot of roads are damaged. What you see on this road, on both sides of the road, there's a lot of trash. This trash is homes that are like completely trash. They placed this the waste. And then the road itself got damaged because a lot of time when this everything is fully saturated subgrades and then cracks, the so water starts coming out. It caused a huge amount of failure of in this area of the pavement. So this is the one Congress has done this uh, a drone survey in Beaumont area uh, in a, in a, almost like a few 10, 15 minutes. They collected the data. Our our original intent is to see whether we can estimate the volume of the stockpile. So if you look on the right hand side, the 3D view, the picture on the right side. So this on the red image is your waste material. This is our geotechnical, uh, what we call debris. So we, ca we can calculate, use this uh, this model to estimate the volume. So you know how many truckloads needs to come and clean up that area. 
On top, we were looking at the pavement surface. At the bottom, you see the elevational uh, difference. If you look at on this side here, whenever it, this thing is reaching this red mark, you see a sudden dip in this area. So that tells me there's a soil failure. Like, you know, there's a big uh, dip of the pavement. So this is something we actually used it. So this is one of the advantages of drone. With the same data, we can do it. So the last topic I will cover is rail corridor monitoring. This is more about rock cut. This is close to Texas-Mexico border, you know, right there. It's an Alpine Presidio. It's a very remote area. But there is a one railway track here, you will see. And it's cut between a, in a rock mechanics area. And, uh, Professor Rao will likes it. It's a really a rock mass. And there is a, in between, they've created a rail track. It's an old rail track. It's actually it's in a lot of old movies also. So here we collected the data using terrestrial LIDAR as well as unmanned systems. So I show you some of these rock cuts. So one of the things what we did is when we collected the flying with the drone, we took the imagery of the whole rock cut, you know, all the slopes, and then we tagged the images. So with a little time, you will know all these things is not that complicated. I mean, initially I had to learn also. So geotagging images, which is like almost every picture you take in your phone, you have to tag, you have a geotagging. So this is something when we analyze it, you will learn more. Then you align them, stitch them, then first build the dense point cloud. Then with the software, so if you image analysis software, you can create a mesh, texture it, DMs and the ortho mosaics and all other things. Once you get output, you get beautiful data. So I'm going to show you these four things, a dense point cloud, ortho mosaics, and then digital elevation models and some contour maps. So I, I show you a, a, an important area of that's probably you will see a lot. So this is a rock cut. There are lots of rock cut failures, you know, and uh, there are modes of slope stabilities in rock cuts. It depends on the type of rock, quality of rock designation. It's a simple plane. If you have a persistent joints dipping out of the slope phase, this is what it is. You will have a failure of this type of plane, plane failure. If you have wedge failure, if you have two inter intersecting discontinuities, you will have a, a kind of a wedge failures. Topping, you know, toppling is typically this kind of thing when you have strong rock containing a lot of discontinuities, you know, dipping steeply into the face. This is what happens. Circular, if you have a very weak rock with randomly oriented discontinuities, you have this information. Again, I think Professor Rao has the information on this type of topic, so you will know it. So you can analyze rock slope stability with using 2D and 3D, using all kinds of uh, limit equilibrium methods like Bishop's, Ambos, and Morgan Stern Price, and Spencer. Most of the software has this, uh, this built-in uh, modules. They use the Hoek brown failure criteria. So just uh, what we did is we, for our study, for our rock cut, which I'll show you in a few minutes, you had to, you need all these soil properties, the unit weights and these unconfined pumps from your lab. And then you have GSI and Hoek brown constant and then our disturbance index. These are the model uh, failure criteria parameters. So there is an explanation how to get these things. If you are in rock mechanics, you probably will know. Also, you can read these papers. So you'll see this, the surface quality and then this interlocking of rock pieces together. You can map on this thing so you will get this GSI number represents geological strength index. And the same thing you do, the M parameters, which will be ranging from 4, 13, depending on high quality, you have a very high number, like a granite, which is your igneous, so very strong rock, 30, 33, you can use for this MI parameter. But very weak is 4. In between, you have different materials, you can use this. So basically, knowing the geological formation and the type of rock, you can choose this number. And... The other factor is D. D. This is also part of your yield function. So the D is really how we are doing the rock. You know, is are we cutting down our tunnel boring machine? So today morning, I have a, a PhD student from France. He's talked about tunnel boring operation. And again, looking at the different types of uh, quality of either blasting or just uh, di you know digging, you can use this D parameter. This really tells you your disturbance to the geo material. So you, these are model parameters. So what you can do is you input them stability problem and you can do rock slope uh, stabilization and production by different matters so if you do analysis if you see if they're going to have a failure you can decide whether you want to do reinforcement or whether you want to remove the rock which is in this case rock removal is completely resloping and trimming 
And then also you can do protection. If there is a part where you can use a mesh, something to kind of catch the dropping rocks. In, in California and a lot of West Coast, we use this, uh, you know, what we call it is the meshes to collect the materials. And a lot of places in, in uh, Northern India also, we have this, uh, you know, catchments areas where you catch the falling rocks, your know, debris. So these are things you, you do by analysis. So one thing I want to show you is when we did this work initially, uh, we flew from this, uh, this is the rock cut area. This is our old uh, railway track, you can see. It's not in functional area, but we wanted to see whether how we can use. So this is our hexacopter here. This is Congress is trying to fly. So you can see the, is, we wanted a stable platform. So we created this and then he, he flew on this. So then once you get this thing, you flew it. This is our digital elevation model. Basically when he flew, he collected the data. So you will see this. Could you, could you conclude it quickly? Sure, I think I'm on my last three slides. So this is the railway track again on both sides and you can see the rock cut. So when we did, we checked the spacings, they're all on uh, correctly, like rail spacing is perfect. They matched with what we have. So more importantly, we use this data to the stability analysis. We have all these uh, dipping slopes. So we input into the three day slopes, uh, you know, 2D slope stability first. We got the sections, three sections, each of the sections with the parameters I showed you in the be beginning. We analyze the factor of safety. So this is the data. So the orange area tells me the weak area. So you can see whether we need to repair it or re-slope re it. And then this is a 3D analysis. The same thing, we use the whole entire area using again, uh, in this particular is Morgan Strand Price. So we were able to do the color coding of the area. So everything is importing with the, with the exactly as it is from the drone, we were able to do it. So this is one of the final pictures. So we also can do 3D printing of this whole air, area, which will give you all the nice features. So in my conclusion, I think, you know, the UAV is a, uh, at the starting of this uh, research, you know, so there are a lot of applications. I'm only probably scrapped from the top. You know, I didn't have all the information. It's a multidisciplinary type of approach. There are a lot of interesting things coming out. Plus, a lot of artificial intelligence tools are now is be being embraced. So I hope uh, many of you getting into this area. And I think, you know, I just want to acknowledge all the funding agency, particularly NSF and Techstart, and also USDOT. And last but not least, this is the group. They do all the great work. I, as I mentioned, you know, this is the Congress here, but first one. And this is Scienton. And then we also have a Ashraf and a Nippo somewhere. I think a Nippo, where is he? Somewhere. And then this is Sirish. You all recognize him. But basically, these are the guys who do all the work. So with that, I conclude my presentation. Sorry if I took a little bit longer. Uh, Professor Anand was, uh, does the uh, drone collect only surface data or depth data? Actually, Surya has already replied. If you could yeah. if you want to add anything, you can just. So I think, you know, like Surya mentioned, it's mostly surficial right now, but there are some drones, uh, some sensors developed from NASA. They're looking a little in-depth. One of them is like hyperspectral imaging analysis, which may give us even clay minerals like, you know, uh, particularly if you can cut a soil like in a cut section like this, maybe take an image there, you can even look for some smectite minerals and elite minerals. That's still in um, developmental stage. But, you know, uh, the the big question is how deep we can go. Right now, uh, very few centimeters within the surface. But we're hoping with the cut sections, maybe taking in an angular view, you could get soil clay mineral. But this is a... Uh, this is something I would recommend like uh, to look into clay mineralogy estimation using hyperspectral or multispectral imaging cameras. Very expensive uh, sensors, but they're under development. 